Hey guys, welcome back to another do-it-yourself installation and repair video. In this video, I'm going to be getting rid of my electric water heater and replacing it with a tankless that's going to be mounted on the wall right behind the heater. You'll be seeing each step from beginning to end, electrical as well as plumbing. Let's get started. Now the water heater is inside of a utility room that I'm renovating and you can see if you go all the way down here, there's a hole through the wall, that's where the dryer vent goes. And you can see a hot and cold water line behind the heater, as well as a plastic line going off to the right. Whoever did this before I purchased the home did not do a very good job. So I'm also going to be fixing up the plumbing when I swap out this water heater with a tankless unit. Now to get started, the first thing we need to do is upgrade the electric. Most 240 volt water heaters are going to have a double pole breaker rated between 20 and 30 amps. This one here happens to have a 20 amp breaker because the heating element used in the unit is not that high of wattage. Water heaters heat up the water and store it inside the tank. When you're ready to use it, the hot water comes from the tank. The tankless unit you mount on the wall and what happens with the tankless unit, when the flow of water is detected, the water is instantly heated. Now when you have a unit like that, in order to heat the water that quickly as it flows through the unit, it's going to be using a lot more power. It's using a lot more power, but only for a short period of time. So in the long run, you're going to be saving on your electric bill by having a tankless heater. So let me unplug this first from this receptacle right here. And you can see by the configuration of the receptacle, it's a 20 amp receptacle, 240 volts. For the tankless heater, the cable is going to be coming directly out of the box through one of the knockouts, not going to be using a receptacle. It's going to be just a steel cover on the front of the box. In order to supply enough power to the tankless heater, we're going to need a double pole 60 amp breaker. And the wiring going to this metal box needs to be 6 gauge. We're going to be having a 10 gauge ground. So the first thing we're going to need to do is completely upgrade the power going to the heater. So let's open this up first. I did turn the breaker off going to the heater so there is no power here. Just to show you there is no power, let me take my bar meter and probe that receptacle. So let's go between ground first and one side. Nothing. Nothing there. Let's go between both. Nothing. So this is definitely off. Always double check the bar meter or tester that you're using on a known live circuit first before probing the circuit that you're going to be working on. Okay, so you see there's no ground wire and the reason for that is because there's a metal conduit going directly from this metal box into the panel which is grounded. So the metal is acting as the ground. Now the conduit that's being used here is half inch EMT to be able to put larger wires through as well as an extra 20 amp single pole circuit. I needed to have a larger pipe so I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch EMT when all this is upgraded. This is very tight. There it goes. Okay. Over here you can see there's a nail. Let me cut that off so I can pull this whole box off the wall. Okay, much better. Just have the half inch threaded adapter that went into the box. Let's go outside and I'll show you the rest of it that has to be replaced. Okay, here's the electrical panel. And this is the conduit or line that we're going to be replacing. It goes all the way over to that LB and then it goes through the wall to the connector you just saw with the two black wires. Let me open this panel up so I can pull the wires out of this conduit. Right here's the two black wires. It goes right to this breaker where it says hot water. You can see the breaker is off. So let's disconnect these two wires. Just pull that out. Okay. The circuit breaker here goes bye-bye. And I have my AC off because the condensing unit is right here and it makes way too much noise trying to film the video. See the handler and compressor is off. 
This breaker right here is going to be replaced with a double pole 60. Okay, so let's grab the wires here, pull them out. Ooh, even better, the whole thing just yanked right out. Good. All right. So that's good. Save me some trouble. Sometimes this is in here really tight in the wall, and you have to pull them out of here. Makes it easier when I unscrew this to separate it, but luckily it came right through. Now let's go back to the panel over there. I'm gonna have to take off one of the clamps. Right, so inside here, we have another lock ring, a lock nut. See it right here, all right. Take off this screw right here. Okay. Fantastic. What I need to do now is pop out the extra ring to make this go from half inch to three quarter knockout. Take a screwdriver very carefully. Sit down on the ring. See it sticking down over here now. Good. Not easy with the camera in front of me because I can't really see what I'm doing. But, okay, what I'm gonna do now is make a duplicate of the half inch conduit with the LB using the three quarter inch EMT and the conduit bender. In addition to what you see right here, I'm gonna add a kick bend where it connects into the panel. The purpose of the kick bend is to get the electrical metallic tubing to lay flatter against the concrete block before going into the electrical panel. You can see what a kick bend looks like right here. To do the kick bend, we're going to place a very slight angle on the end. When it's all finished, I want to have this flat against the concrete block wall and the end of the tubing to come up and out off the wall about five eighths to three quarters of an inch. Never mind my work boots. So I'm gonna push here just a little bit. That's plenty. Now I'm gonna take it and flip it around. You wanna make sure that this is facing downward now. You don't want it left and right, you want it straight down. And that looks Pretty good. Let's see. Right there. Now I'm going to bend it again. I'm going to take a look at it. A little bit more. That should be good. All right, to figure out where to place this for the 90s, very simple, there's an arrow right here. I measured on this one right here with the bender in position where the arrow lines up for the inside of that curve, 10 inches. So 10 inches over here. Make sure this goes up, facing forward like this into the panel. And we're gonna have the bend going that direction. So let me bend that exactly where it is. Go all the way 90. Okay, if you take a look at the other end, you're going to see that there's a liquid tight connector and it's lined up exactly with the other one. The wrench is just holding everything in position. Now what I need to do is make sure that the new LB that that's going to end up with the hole in the same spot. So what I'm going to do is take the liquid tight connector with the compression ring, and I'm going to thread it in right here, tighten it down securely, and then once that's tightened, I'm going to line it up for the center of this conduit, 
Make a mark on the pipe and cut it. All right, and now very carefully, I'm going to keep going all the way around until I cut all the way through. Once the cut's been made, you have to remove that ridge that formed. It's very sharp, it can cut into the wire. So you're going to need to use a reamer. If it's too small, then you could use the end of lineman's pliers. Just keep rotating back and forth to smooth out the ridge. And you know what? That feels pretty good. Now on to the next step, we're going to connect up the LB. With everything properly aligned, you can see the LB is in position. The opening of the LB to pass through the concrete block wall is on center with the old half-inch EMT. So let me tighten this nut, and then we're going to add this extension right here to go through the wall. You can see I made a larger hole to accommodate the liquid tight connector that's going to be inserted into the concrete block. I also drilled the hole larger on the opposite side. So what I need to do now is just get this inside the hole, and on the inside I'm going to put this adapter, and then we can connect the metal box. Okay, this is what it looks like with the new conduit in place. As you can see, it was a perfect fit, and if you take a look sideways right over here, you're going to see why that kick bend was very important. The only other thing I have to do here is place some sealant behind the LB around that hole. And right here inside the utility room, you can see that the raised edge of this connector is flush with the surface of the wall and the threads stick out. Three quarter inch knockout removed. Going to be tap conning that to the wall. But before I do that, I'm gonna put some caulking around this adapter. That's fine, let's go to dark. Yeah, this came out exactly according to plan. Okay, that's straight. If it looks crooked, it's just the camera angle. So let me put a tap con right there. Okay, probably stand on that. That's pretty good. All right, let's go outside now. We're gonna open up the LB, feed the number six wires, as well as the number 12 for my 20 amp circuit. The 20 amp circuit's not gonna be connected up right now. I'm just gonna leave them inside this box. Okay, so here's the wire I'm going to be feeding through. I have number six, red and black, stranded copper. Number 10, that's the ground wire for the tankless heater. And then I have in number 12 stranded, green, black, and white from my other circuit. So I'm gonna pull all of these through at the same time, through the LB and into the wall, so I can close this all up, put the breakers, and just leave them turned off. Okay, let's feed in all the wires. Hopefully it goes through nice and smooth. There is a plastic bushing inside the male thread of this connector here. Any minute we should see it reach the LB. I'm right there now. Now I need to leave enough to reach my top breaker, which is going to be a double pole 60, more than enough. I got more than enough of the 12, 12 gauge and 10. Let's push some more through. Let's see. That's a good amount. Yep, leave that there. And I can trim that off. Sounds good. Okay, all the wires are through the wall. Put the cover on the LB and then we can connect up the circuit breakers in the panel. Okay, everything is stripped and ready to go. This is the 20 amp line that's going to be going to my washing machine when I move it. You can see the washer no longer has a wire on it because the old circuit's been removed. Over here is the neutral and ground for my washer. Over here is the ground wire for the tankless water heater and right here is the two six gauge wires for the tankless heater. The white wire and the green are gonna to connect to the terminal strip you see right here. You notice they're both connected together on both sides. 
This panel is bonded. You can see the green screw. That means the neutral is connected to the panel itself. Some panels you may see a ground bar that's isolated because there's no bonding screw in place. In that case, you would take the green wires, connect it to the ground strip bar, and then the white wire would go to the neutral bar. In my case, everything goes to the neutral bar. The breaker, double 60, just gotta connect these up, tighten it down and put it in position. Let me do it all, come right back, show you and move back into the utility room. Ground wires now connected. Let's head inside and continue on. And this is what it looks like on the inside of the utility room with the wire stripped and all ready to go. I got the 10 gauge green going to the ground screw on the box, feeds right through, goes to the end over here to tie into the tankless heater. And I kept the six gauge wires just a little bit shorter than I would normally keep them only because this is a one and a half inch box. When the knockout is removed and the heater is connected, all I'm going to do is just put this cover on like that. With the power supply for the tankless heater ready to go, the next step is to remove the heater. To do that, I'm going to turn off the city water supply to my house, and then I'm going to cut the copper lines and then drain the tank. The valve is open. The only way the tank is going to drain now is if you open up one of the hot fixtures in your home or just go up to the top of the heater and just open up the temperature pressure valve and it's now draining. So let's wait for this to fully drain and then I'll cut the tubing. Next I'm going to cut that plastic line. It's going to have to be all redone properly with copper. Once that's cut I'll be able to take the cold line which is blue and the hot against the wall and run it directly into the tankless heater which I'm going to be mounting right over here. All right, things are a little cleaner now. I trimmed this off to the height where my heater is going to be, so it's going to be in this area on the wall to the right of the window. The bottom is all ready for me to unsweat so I can get that T in the right position to go up the wall. Now, the most important thing, when purchasing a tankless heater, you want to make sure that the flow rate is ideal for the number of bathrooms in your house as well as where you're living. If you're living in a colder climate, you're going to have to make sure that the heater has the ability to take that very cold water and make it very hot very quickly. So the unit's gonna be mounted just like this in this general area. Cold is on the right. Unfortunately, in my case, the cold is just to the left of the hot. So I'm going to have to redo that so the cold ends up on the right. And we're also going to put a quarter turn ball valve on the cold water inlet side. So if I ever need to turn off the hot water, I can just shut it off right here with the valve and also turn the power off to the tankless heater. In order to connect my tankless heater to the tubing, I'm going to be using a half inch female adapter. One side you solder, the other side is threaded on with Teflon tape as well as a pipe thread compound. I'm going to clean all this paint off of here and dust, and that will be soldered directly onto the end. I'm going to have to put over here a coupling so I'll be able to thread this on without putting a lot of heat next to the unit. Once it's threaded onto the unit, then I can slide it back into the coupling and sweat it lower down. When you purchase tankless heaters, some of them will come with a template for mounting. So I'll be using this so I know exactly where the screw holes are supposed to go. And here's your hot and cold. So it goes just like that. With the screws into the concrete wall, now take the unit with the cover off, should go on, hopefully. Yep, very nice. Now with this mounted to the wall, you can see there's really not too much to these units. Over here is your cold water inlet. This is your flow sensor. So depending on how much water is flowing into the unit, it'll regulate how much power is going to the heating element. So if you only have a trickle coming out of your faucet, you're only going to have a little bit of power going into those elements to heat up the water to the correct temperature. Over here is a temperature sensor for the cold water on the inlet side. Over here is your temperature sensor on the outlet side. You have a low voltage board. This drives the display panel on the front. Over here you have a terminal block, you've got line one, line two going over to here, and it goes to this disconnect. This is an 
over temperature disconnect. So if it gets too hot on this black area here, which is your heater, it's going to trip. You can reset it right there. The water goes in, goes around like coils, and then you have your heating elements right next to it, getting that water very hot very quickly. The way the heating elements turn on and off is, I believe these are triacs, so there's really not too much here to go wrong. If you notice that there's power to this unit, but the display does not work, more than likely this board is faulty. And if the unit is not heating, you would want to check the flow sensor to make sure it is detecting flow. And then you can also start checking the triacs. I have a video showing how to check these type of heaters. I placed a link at the end of the video if you're interested in seeing that. Some, but not all, of these tankless heaters have a relief valve built in. And I think on the back of this unit, I saw a little brass valve. So I'm thinking that it's set to a certain pressure in the event that this fails and it continues to heat water with the faucet turned off. The water would spray to the back of the unit where there's a space and run down the wall. Let me get all the plumbing in order and we're going to come back and you'll see how I sweat everything together. And here it is with all the plumbing connected up. The only thing I have to do now is solder the female adapters to the short section of copper on each side. Do that first because you don't want to put excessive heat anywhere near this unit. So let me do these two first, come back, and then we'll go over every one of these joints with the propane torch. As you can see, over here has been soldered together, as well as over here, and there's Teflon tape and pipe thread compound applied to each one of these connections, and it's been tightened down securely. With that done, I can now solder each one of these connections. Once you're finished, you're going to wipe the connection really good, and it should be a nice, smooth connection there, with no pits anywhere. Okay, let me finish off all the other connections so we can hook up the power and give it a try. And right here is a close-up of the fittings to show you how nicely the soldered connection is when enough heat is applied and the connection is very clean. Now what I'm going to do is turn on the water, wait a few minutes just to make sure there's no leaks, and then carry on with the electrical connection. It's very important that before you power up a tankless heater, you turn on the water first and open up a fixture in the house on the hot side to make sure that any air that's trapped inside gets pushed out through the faucet or the shower. By doing that, you'll prevent any damage to the heating element when the unit powers on. Okay, a few minutes has passed, it is turned on. All the connections are nice and dry. So what I'm going to do now is put the cover back on, connect up the power, so we can get this thing going and make sure it comes out of the faucet nice and hot. As you can see, the cover's back on the unit. Two clamps into the concrete block wall to support the cable. Clamp right here at the metal box, and each one of the connections very secure using these large blue wire nuts. Now let's put this back inside, put the plate on, and power it up. Power is now on. And it's set at 125 Fahrenheit is the hottest. Let's go inside and give it a try. 122, or just under. Keep in mind, when the pipe goes under the concrete slab, it's going to get a little bit cooler before it gets to the faucet. So the 125 looks pretty good. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.